Good day, my beautiful and kind people. Welcome, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here because today we're going to cook something very special for my heart. Something very delicious, very crispy, airy, and just beautiful. We're going to make Dutch oven bread. Yay! Before we get right into it though, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. I create and post videos on cooking, culinary techniques, nutrition and wine every two days. But if you're already watching this, you probably already checked out my previous videos, so you know what I mean. Okay, enough of that. Okay, I've already said it like a million times by now, and it comes as no news to anyone. But here comes one more time. Baking is science, so pay attention to details. At the same time, however, bread making is a good starting point for anyone who wants to get into baking. And the bread that we are making today is fairly simple with not many ingredients and variables. Nevertheless, please make sure that you follow my guidance on temperature and exact measurements. Those are probably the two most important factors in this particular bread baking. Please also don't replace bread flour with all-purpose one or any other flour for that matter. Those two are different types of flours with different strength to them. In other words, they don't act the same way. By the way, if you want me to break down the difference between different types of flours, let me know in the comment section below. It's a basic baking knowledge and I'll be happy to share it with you. For one large loaf of Dutch oven bread, we will need two cups of warm water at room temperature, one teaspoon of sugar, 8 grams of traditional active dry yeast, 200 grams of bread flour, 400 grams of whole wheat flour, half a cup of sunflower seeds, and 2 teaspoons of salt. First, what is the room temperature, you may ask? And I can answer that room temperature is somewhere around 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit. But who is actually going to stand here with a thermometer and check the water temperature? No one, right? So here is a tip for you to skip all of that unnecessary stuff. Just stick your clean finger under the water and feel the temperature. If your finger doesn't feel the difference between the air and the water, it means that the water is of room temperature. Unless, of course, you live in Dubai and your kitchen is super cold. Those people who had ever been to Dubai know what I'm talking about. It's super hot outside, but it's just freezing cold in all the living spaces from all that air conditioning. Second, why room temperature? Easy. As I have explained in my previous video on the Chinese guabao, link above, yeast is a collection of microorganisms that eat carbs in our dough and produce in return carbon dioxide and alcohol. Since it's a living organism, yeast is sensitive to surrounding temperature, like all of us. When the temperature is too low, yeast in its dormant inactive state. When it's too high, it just dies. So it's very important to keep uh, it between 20 to 32 degrees Celsius for the maximum productivity. And if it's anywhere below or above, no dough growth would be achieved. And you would waste several hours of your life for this. So just maintain the right temperature. Third and final for today, always, and I mean always, sieve your flour. This is not a fancy stuff to do and it's not to make your dough fluffier, no. You would just not believe what kind of stuff bakers would find in their flour sometimes. Flour that most of us are using is milled on large commercial premises. And there is lots of things going on around these meal machines that can get into. Not even mentioning insects that can get into your flour bag. Trust me on this, just sieve it. Okay, you can put your notepad down now because our theory section is over and we can get to business. It's business, it's business time. First, mix sugar and yeast into one cup of warm water and let it bloom. While the yeast is blooming, sieve your flour, mix in sunflower seeds and salt. Create a funnel and wait for the yeast to finish its thing. Finally, pour the yeasty water into the funnel and add the second cup of water and mix the dough. 
Once the dough is more or less mixed, take it out of the bowl and onto a clean table surface and work. Work the dough just enough to develop the gluten, but not to overwork it so those gluten strands that we've just developed won't break, as there is a limit to how long they can stretch. So I would say just make sure that all the flour is incorporated, form a bowl, and that should be just enough, about 5 minutes. Put the dough bowl into a flour dusted bowl. Cover tightly with plastic wrap and leave it in in warm environment for hour and a half. As you can see, our bread dough has doubled in size, but it's not enough. Let's take it out of the bowl and fold a few more times. I would say fold it twice and repeat the proofing process again for another one hour. Okay, that's why it gets interesting. Before we start baking, we need to preheat our Dutch oven. By the way, Dutch oven is a thick walled cooking pot with a tight fitting lid. So anything that fits this description, you can use for bread making. Just make sure it's oven safe. That is to say, what stores here in North America call Dutch oven gets super expensive. I remember how I bought my first Dutch oven back in Barcelona when I used to live there for under 20 euros, while here the prices for the same size Dutch oven can get to more than 200 Canadian dollars. And that's ridiculous. You don't need some marketing people to call it Dutch oven. So I personally got a casserole pot for only 20 Canadian dollars and it does the job perfectly well. Back to the topic though. Preheat the oven with the lid on Dutch oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 45 minutes. Meanwhile, let's work the dough one last time, so three times for the whole process. At this stage, you don't want to fold it again, you just want to pull it in with your hands towards you, like this. Make sure that your working space is not covered with flour, otherwise the dough would just slide and would not get shaped. Do that a few times, I'll say like three or four times, and then put it into a shaping basket to rest, while our Dutch oven is getting hot enough. After about 45 minutes, take the dough out and put it onto a parchment paper. If you want to score it, now is the perfect time. Put on your kitchen mittens and take the Dutch oven out. Take off the lid, Put the bread in and pour some water, about 2 tablespoons in, and quickly close the lid. Put the Dutch oven back into the oven and bake with the lid on. After 30 minutes, take the lid off and bake for another 15 minutes to get that perfect brown color. Okay, our beautiful bread is ready. Mmm, oh my god, it smells so good! Smell it, smell it! I can't wait to taste it and tell you guys what we've just made. Okay, <laughs> it's enough. While the bread is cooling down, let me tell you guys, why did we use Dutch oven bread method in this case? Dutch oven provides closed, more controlled environments for the bread making. The moisture trapped inside the closed pot keeps exterior of the bread moist and elastic, so not as hot for the first stage of the baking and consequently allowing the loaf to grow bigger. 
Also, check in with the scientific part of the process. The prolonged period of the enzymatic activity due to closed environment allows sugars to unlock further and brighten sexy crust to develop. Mm, I can't resist the smell. I need to cut it right now. Listen. The sound of heaven. Okay guys, that was a very long video with lots of theory and culinary techniques explained. I hope it wasn't too nerdy for you though. If you like this video, please click that like button somewhere here and definitely subscribe. That's literally the only way how I know that I'm on the right path here. If you have any ideas of what kind of videos I should make for you, please comment below. My next video is coming up this Tuesday and we are going to talk about what I've learned while studying in a culinary school. You don't want to miss it, it's gonna be fun. For now though, we have to part our ways, guys. Bye-bye!